put those leatherettes to one side. Yeah. I'll remove the front rings from the shutter. Let's get that in the normal position to remove them and see what position everything is inside there. If somebody's had these three rings up these rings off and put them back in the wrong place, then the rings would have been misaligned and there would be no chance that the meter would work correctly or at all perhaps. One of these screw heads is a bit mutilated and I'll deal with that later. Yeah, this is incorrect. So in that position, that should have sat there. It's only half a stop out. That's pretty close. We'll give them that. Put these rings to one side. It does have its return spring. Oh, it's very gummy. Okay. Now we're getting down to it. Come on, camera, keep up. That's better. This little pinion can come off. And this one. which couples through to the meter drum. It has the meter cord on it. It's a bit reluctant to come out. Now we have three screws here. We should have had four. This screw definitely began its life somewhere else. These other two are so covered in adhesive they probably started their life here. They look correct. This one does not. This one most likely came from the opposite corner because it's got no glue on it. The front should lift off. There's our shutter assembly complete. Now I'm looking here at the washers, the spacer washers that go in here. These are cup shaped washers, there will be two in each position giving us a total of eight or there will be three in each position giving us, giving us a total of twelve and in this case I have five so the others were lost. The meter cords off the drum, but I'd already sort of expected that. Let's unhook this. The cords really just about too large a diameter to run smoothly around the uh, the pulleys. It may or may not work. I'll try using that when we put it back together. Here's the cable drum from the bottom of the camera that the cable runs around. Right, Let's flip these bits over, hold that back, I can lift that forward, lift this forward. That allows me to lift out the baffles. This baffle is a double arrangement, you can see it's displaced here, it should be sitting like that, with that tab in that position. If you don't have the baffle in there, you end up with funny areas on your film, like flared areas. You get you get light bounces around where you don't want it to. So, I want to remove these arms and this because I have to, to get to this this shaft here anyway. So it's got three screws at the top. They're only just long enough to do the job.
take this top piece off, it has got a washer on it, a little spacer washer, I'll put that to one side, they are very easily lost. I can lift out the shaft, the transfer shaft, that looks okay, I'll know more once I've cleaned it. This lever, which gives us our um, rangefinder coupling, that looks fine. There wasn't another washer on the bottom, sometimes there is. This spring, the return spring here is very easily lost. Please to see that, we we'll have that back. This piece here, this is, must be an early Retina 3S. This is our adjustment for the cord tension. You can see it's right at the top of the stroke so that it's not applying any extra tension to the cord. And the body now is starting to look a bit stripped out. I need to get that rewind button off. Unfortunately I have a pair of pliers shapes to do that job. Now the rewind button is covered in adhesive I see. So another sign that whoever put the leatherettes on was generous with the application of adhesive. I have to get all that up. Oh, that's, that's interesting. That's, that's funny, that adhesive. I'm not sure what that is. It's not a contact adhesive. All right. We'll deal with that. A single screw holds... Come, passes through a slot here in the... Rocket shaft and couples these two pieces together effectively. The sprocket can come out. Now you can lift the top off the film advance mechanism here. It's dirty with grease and so forth, but otherwise nothing untoward. This is the clutch assembly, and the clutch assembly's job is to provide some controlled slippage between the sprocket and the take-up spool so that this film builds up on the take-up spool as the camera is as film is wound through the camera and the di effective diameter of the take-up spool increases it stops you need slippage otherwise things will tear I would just unhook that spring from the rewind button catch that screw, that spring can go there. And there's our lever. That looks okay. Sometimes they're bent. Uh, they can become bent. I'm not sure how people do that. Three screws hold the film advance into the body casting. Often they're loose. These ones are not loose. Here's their shaft. Just retrieve the three screws from that plate. To the cleaner and I'm looking at the film advance shaft here and what I'm most concerned with is to make sure that the plate on the bottom here that the film advance lever mounts to isn't isn't loose on the shaft you're only crimped on or riveted on at the end they can come loose if there's been some abuse and the sort of abuse I'm thinking of there is uh, the camera having hit the ground so that the film advance lever struck something and therefore forced things off. There's a metal bush on the base of this film because uh, take up spool. Take up spool looks good, it hasn't been damaged by solvent or anything. I'll put that to one side. So, what have we got here? 
well, neglecting the shutter for a second. Oh, there's the other washer I was looking for earlier. It was present. We've got our body casting, which I'll need to clean up because you can see the adhesive. You can see how much they used, and it ran right down inside the body. That's only one layer of unnecessary adhesive. There's at least two. And you can, this here is very rough. It's like a it's like a road surface. I want all that filth off there because I'll never get the leatherettes to glue back on smoothly into that. Okay, there's the body casting. Apart from that, it's not bad. The leatherette on the back's pretty good. I think that'll be fine to use. I'll put that to one side. Here's my tray of parts that have to go into the degreaser first. They get 10 minutes in degreaser in the ultrasonic cleaner and then they go into a uh, the ultrasonic cleaner in a strong domestic detergent, ammonia based detergent and get another 10 minutes in very hot water and by the time they're done with that and rinsed they come back looking like new parts. Well this has certainly been out, you can see people's alignment marks here where they've made note of where these gears sit. I can see those marks clearly, they probably work well there, I'm just going to cock the shutter and it, it works fine. That was the B setting. It worked fine. Let's try it on. Um... Oh, it doesn't want to move. One, two. Quarter. That's, there's something odd about the way that's moving. That's very stiff. We won't force that. But the shutter does work. You can see it's a bit sluggish. Now here, this is our coupling for the frame counter, um, no not frame, frame selector. I suspect there's a piece missing in there. So I'll pull the keeper off the back and put that down. Slide the shaft out the front. We have these components. There should be another one. There should be a plain brass tube, roughly this long, that sits at this end. It's missing. That means that the frame selector couldn't possibly work. So that's a shame to see that because I'm not sure what I'll be able to spare. I'll have to work on that. So that that little gem has been caused by somebody working on the shutter. They've pulled that shaft out and they haven't taken note of all the pieces and they probably ended up with a stray part on their floor or on their workbench that they had no idea what it was or where it came from. So stripping down this part, we've got four screws that hold the shutter body here to the mount, down here, here, here and here. I'm looking to see if they're present. I can see a head of a screw down there, it's not really what I was expecting to see. That might be the right thing. I can see some screws down there. screwdriver's engaged, that's a good good sign. They're certainly done up tight. One more, this is the only one you can clearly see what you're doing. There's two of the screws. They were all undone, the other two are just wrapping around in this housing here. There they are. Now the flash contact here, it's connected, there's a little plastic 
connector here with a screw on the side of it that joins things up. It's never easy to get at. That should do it. That wire comes out, our shutter's off, there's that little connector I was talking about. With the screw in the middle, I'll pop that to one side. So here we have the front of the camera. And I want to get this crap off that plate, so I'm going to disassemble that to make it easier to do that. Now that screw looks a little bit mutilated. That's very dirty looking, that screw. I suspect that may not be the correct screw. That's, what, that's the missing screw from the front of the camera. There should have been clean, shiny looking screws here. Oh, this is all stuck together. I hope nobody's glued it. Take these three screws out, then I think we'll be in business. Alright, here's our chrome trim. This piece should come off. It does, it was just stuck there with filth. And here's our front plate. I'm pleased to see that this wheel revolves smoothly because sometimes they don't. They're all this thick crap here has to come off. Uh, most of that can be scraped off with a scalpel and solvent to deal with the rest of it. These other parts look okay. Bit of adhesive stuck on the back of that. That looks good. I'll pop those screws in there, they can go through the cleaner. And I will consider what I'm going to do about my frame selector. Alright, well. Let's pop that rubbish to one side for the moment. Look at the shutter itself. Is there anything odd about the shutter itself? Well, I noticed that the speed setting here was stiff. It is very stiff. It's like the uh, tension on the detent the, for the... There's a ball and a spring effectively creates a detent there to give us our shutter speeds, the click stops, it's like there's too much tension there, there's something odd going on. Let's have that apart and find out. Well there's the ball, that's present. Nothing particularly untoward looking with the spring. The shutter speed selector here works smoothly enough. I wonder whether that spring has been bent. That's the cover plate from the front. We don't need that in there at the moment. And the shutter itself, now that we've got it apart, what can we tell about that, if anything? What is the tool I use to cock shutters? I can't see it, I'll use something else. It's 
that is cocked. We set it to one second. What do we get? Yeah, it works, but it was very sluggish to close up that last final bit. It means it's sticky and or the main drive spring is very gutless. Either or both. Alright, so the shutter needs to be stripped and clean, but it is present. Does the self timer work? Let's find out. Set that, set that to 15th. What happens when we release it? Self timer is running down. Shutter fires. Okay, so the shutter is basically a goer, certainly needs to be serviced, but it has the makings of a shutter that will work. So, based on what I see in front of me, I need the missing tube for my rangefinder coupling for the frame selector. The tube's missing from there. And what else do I need? There's missing screws, obviously, missing springs. Um, the at the base of the camera, the back catch cover was missing, so all of those pieces need to be replaced. Leatherettes for the base of the camera and the advanced lever. I've got to do something with the top cover. I've got to get this piece, which is clearly a replacement piece for the original. I've got to get that correctly fitted into place and replace the missing window here. I've got to replace this missing window here. Judging by those globs of brown glue, someone had had a go at gluing that back in place with the same nasty adhesive that they'd used everywhere else on the camera. However, I'll get these pieces to the cleaner and then I'll come back, clean up the body and look at the process of reassembly.